I have an antenna tuner and a vector network analyzer, and we will be taking a look at how we can do a perfect impedance match with a antenna. So let's take a look at my antenna first. Um, I will put it on the bypass switch. So this is the raw um, antenna. We're sweeping between 3 and 30 megahertz, okay? 3 and 30. So let's get a bigger picture here. Uh, let's see here. A scale, let's do a 5 dB per, per thing. A reference position, we'll move it up to the top here. There you go, that looks pretty good. So, um, get rid of that. So this is our raw antenna, all right? So you can see um, that it is, it is lumpy, okay? And how do you read this chart? Well, it's, it's a, a DB law. So a lot of people just don't understand a log, a log mag scale, okay? This is what's called log mag. A lot of people from ham radio land will be familiar with SWR. So we'll put in SWR, and you can see that over the various frequencies, the SWR goes off the top, and uh, sometimes it's pretty good, like it's 1.4 here, and it's kind of below two in some places, which might be usable, but it's bad a whole bunch of other places, right? Well, where is it good? Let's put a, a marker, uh, and let's move our marker over to somewhere where it's good. 10.2, eh, it might be, you know, 10 point, yeah, they're probably usable here on, on 10 meter, on uh, 10 megahertz. Let's look at 14 megahertz. Let's see, 14 point something or other, uh, right around right in there, 2.2, that's not good. Um, and then let's say, let's play 21, 21 point something. Yeah, see, in, at uh, 15 meters, it's working really, really good. So, uh, but uh, my antenna is really, really bad at uh, 40 meters. So if I come here to, uh, 7.1 megahertz, it's just terrible. We'll go back to log mag, because uh, we can see more. Format, log mag. Okay, so you can see that it's just, it's just minus 4 dB, which is terrible. You want to, you know, about minus 20 dB. All right, so this is why I need an antenna tuner on 40 meters, and I can make all the other ones better too. Now, the radio that I have has a built-in antenna tuner, and it's able to take these guys and make them better, but it's not able to take that guy and make them better because he's just so bad to begin with. And that's why uh, antenna tuners are really good. Um, some people have radios that don't have antenna tuners, and you'll need one of these on all bands. All right, so let's click in the antenna tuner, and uh, you can see that, boom, um, that 7.1 megahertz is now a perfect match. It's an absolute perfect match. If we go to uh, SWR, you can see that we're almost one-to-one -one, uh, SWR. So that's looking really, really good. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Okay, let's do a start of seven megahertz and a stop of 7.3 megahertz. And that is the uh, 40 meter band. All right, so it, it's really good right where I have it, but it's not very good here um, at seven megahertz. Um, let's say that we're seven point something or other here. Let's put the let's put the marker. Let's put the marker. Let's say we want to transmit right here, okay? And we don't have a good match. So now we're going to have to adjust the knobs on our uh, uh, antenna tuner. We can we can uh, stay out of the camera here. We can grab this one and we can say, oh, that's that's sort of moving things, but it's kind of maybe not going in the right direction. You can grab the uh, uh, one of the capacitors. You can say, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, that's looking good. And I can use this again. Oh, that's looking good. Uh, and you can grab this one again. Oh, that's looking good. And you can see that we can make uh, a very good SWR. Uh, right where we need it to be, okay? Yeah. So, um, that's the way these antenna tuners work. The uh, um, impedance of the antenna is not matching 50 ohms. We want it to be 50 ohms. 
Now, this particular plot here you can do with a spectrum analyzer and a return loss bridge or a, a coupler. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. I don't know if it's going to be this video or a different video, but I'll show you how to do that with a spectrum analyzer. Um, the other thing that might be interesting to do is um, to look at it on a Smith chart. This is what I wanted to do today. Format a Smith chart. So you can see that what a Smith chart is doing, I need to set the uh, center to 50 ohms. There we go. All right. Um, so you can think of a Smith chart as a bullseye. You're trying to get to the center. The center is where 50 ohms is. And concentric circles away from that center are, are lines of constant SWR. Okay. And so you want to be as close as you can. Now, for this particular frequency, the one that I have the marker on, you can see that we're right there at 50 ohms. In fact, we can even zoom in a little bit on that. And you can see uh, there's, there's where 50 ohms is. And if I, if I grab, the, uh, grab the knobs here, I can, I can slide things over. And so this might be this might be one way to adjust it. Use your use your Smith chart. I kind of zoomed in too far here, but you get the idea that you could you could use a Smith chart. Now the cool thing about Smith charts is you know directions of things. Okay, I'm going to turn the uh, uh, I'm going to turn the inductor here, and you can sort of see. Uh, what that inductor is doing. It's actually making an arc like this, okay? And um, then if I grab the uh, this capacitor, all right, uh, this capacitor is making an arc like this. Um, and so a lot of times you don't know which way to which way to move. And with a Smith chart, you can you can sort of figure that out. And if we grab this capacitor, we can see that it's it's uh, it's doing things along this along these lines. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, if you wanted one particular frequency, then that would be the right way to do it. But if you wanted the entire band, how could you make the entire band as good as you can and not have to move anything? Well, you could sort of put this. Um, let's see if we can. Make this a little bit better here. Tighten this up. All right. So maybe about here. You're looking for constant bullseyes, right? You, so you're, the Smith chart doesn't have those drawn on them, but you have to imagine concentric circles from the center. And this is probably the best for the biggest amount of ranges. Now, how bad is it everywhere? Uh, let's go to Visver here. So 1.8 to 2.2. Yeah, that's not too bad. Now, see, we're not a perfect match anywhere, but we've got more a, a more broad band. But we can make it we can make it better at one point, but then we 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 ruin the the outer band here, right? And you get to a point where it just isn't giving you any more there we go. That's probably, you want to balance the two, right? And so that's probably good. We're kind of like less than two to one everywhere on the band. And we're really good right down there. But um, instead of using your um, radio to analyze things with a tuner and everything, using a VNA gives you kind of a, a more general map of what your antenna is doing, okay? And you can get close with this. If you, if you suddenly replace the transmitter where the, uh, the VNA is, um, the input impedance of the VNA is a perfect 50 ohms, but your input impedance of your radio is not gonna be a perfect 50 ohms. And so you need, to, you need to rebalance it. You can't just go and say, okay, this is the perfect setting. Now I'm just gonna move it over to my radio and call it good. Now you need to actually tweak it with your radio as well. Okay, uh, let's zoom back out 
and you can see here we have uh, really good on on that particular band all right um, let's see if we can tune uh, to 20 meters we'll set our marker to 14.1 okay and our visor is just terrible now right so let's uh, see what the antenna all by itself is doing that's not too bad it's around 2.1 uh, something like that, but let's see if we can't if we can't make it better. All right So let's start turning some knobs. We'll turn the inductor. Not much is going on. We'll turn this knob Not much is going on. Why? Because I'm still on bypass. Okay, we'll go. We'll go back to the uh, go back to the uh... Now see this is why you don't want to use visible because you can't see anything So we'll go back to log mag and now we can kind of see where we are there and what we oh there we go Oh uh, Remember, down is down is the good direction. All right, down is the good direction. We'll just keep going down, 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 down. Oh, there we go. Turning the turning the inductor. We're going down. Uh, all right, about there. And then we'll tweak these some more. Tweak this one some more. Yeah, it's a real it's a real battle to uh, to get the perfect match here. We should be able to get better than this. What's going on? Let's go. What's going on? Let's see if we can't find a different solution. There's not always, not always the perfect solution on where you're starting from. Well, maybe a little bit better there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, sometimes it's sometimes it's hard to find it, but there we go. Uh, all right. Now I wonder if we could have gotten there faster if we used the Smith chart. Okay. So I'm just going to randomly screw those up and we'll go to using the Smith chart to to zoom in on that now. OK, and what we're going to do is we're going to limit our search. OK, so we're going to do frequency start of 14 megahertz and we'll do a stop of uh, 14.2 megahertz. OK, just that's that's where we want to have it in tune. OK, now it's way over here, right? It's got too much too much capacitance. Um, so we need to some inductance in we need to move this over what direction are we going there look at that look at look at how fast that is to get over there <laughs> so um, I think the Smith chart is actually one of the better ways to zoom in on the point of interest because you can watch it move when you're looking at it without any phase information it's really really hard to figure out what direction to move but on a Smith chart you can kind of just see, oh, I'm kind of going back and forth with that one. Oh, I'm kind of going this away with that one. Um, they are on arcs, right? So this one's this one's on this this arc here. Um, this one is on uh, an arc over here, right? And then the inductor is on an arc that that looks like this. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's easier. I think it's easier easier on a Smith chart. <laughs> Let's get it perfect. Let's move in our scale here. Oops, went the wrong way. Yeah, we'll zoom in here and then we'll try to dial it perfect. Perfect. See? Easy. It's it's easy. <laughs> it's easy with the Smith chart. Because uh, you get an idea of X and Y or whatever you want to call it. Some kind of relative motion. You uh, know how to dial it in better. How good are we here? We can, we can scale. We can keep scaling in. There we go. Uh, there's 51 ohms and there's 49 ohms. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're zoomed in. We're looking pretty good. We could add, uh, let's see here. We can add averaging to smooth this out and uh, average factor. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, we have a nice, a nice looking, uh, nice looking graph now with averaging on. Should we see if we can't make it perfect? Can we make it perfect? Oops, went the wrong way. Oops, average is going to, average is going to slow me down. It's going to be hard to figure out where we are. Whoa, 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 I think, oh, no. So averaging is might, 
might not be the uh, might not be the right thing to have on when you're doing this type of thing. Turn the averaging off. Oops. Whoa, it's real touchy. We're really, really getting getting close to. Uh, there we go. Turn the averaging on. Yeah, we're pretty good. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's the video for the day. I'll do. Um, Although I'll do these types of measurements on a uh, spectrum analyzer on a different video.